Section 6.5 talks about the law of sine. Consider the following triangle. If they take the height, <coughs> given all of these angles, all of these sides, if I take the sine of angle beta, that's the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if I cross multiply, I will get the height of this triangle to be A times the sine of the angle beta. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at this problem from the other angle, from angle A. I'm going to say the sine of angle A is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And if I cross multiply, I'll get the height to be side B times the sine of A. Now, this book is very consistent with literally, or respectively, I should say, B, angle B is the opposite of side B, angle A is the opposite of side A, and C, opposite of side C. Other books, opposite of A, they use alpha, B beta, and C gamma, but no big deal to us. We're going to go with letters, that's fine. And now, since I know that the height is the same, then A, the sine of B, must equal B, the sine of A. And if I divide both sides by A, B, since those are sides of a triangle and they can be zero, I will get the sine of angle beta to side B, which is the opposite side of it, equals the sine of angle A divided by the opposite side of that angle, and I could show that that equals to the sine of C over side C. And that's the famous law of sine if I really eliminate the height out of the equation. Just leave that in. But if you ignore it, with the given information, if you gave me any triangle, I could take the sine of an angle divided by the opposite side should equal the sine of any of the other angles divided by any of the opposite sides. That's the law of sine. So we're going to start with our first examples. Solve the triangles. Find everything that's missing. The book insists on the law of sine in case you knew about the law of cosine from before. Well, no biggie. Let's see how this works. Figure this out any way you can. Well, I could figure out what this is. Because I know that's 180 minus those two. The sum of the three angles of any triangle is 180 minus the other angle. So I know beta is 180 degrees minus 65 degrees minus 93.2 degrees, and I know beta is 180 minus 65 minus 93.2, 21.8 degrees. And now that I know all the angles, I need to find the missing side. This is side B because it's opposite of angle beta, and this is side A. And I could say now, if I take the sine of 93.2 degrees divided by the opposite side, if you want to find A, you'll say the sine of 65 degrees divided by A. And if you cross multiply, you would notice that A is the product of those divided by the sine of 93.2 degrees and that turns out to be 101.67 if they give me units I will put units in and that's what it is done with that so this is 101.67 it should be smaller than 112 and it is 
and don't think 93 is about time and a half this should be that's not how it works and if I go for the other missing side now I, I should use the given information the sine of 93.2 degrees to 112 equal and now I'm gonna go for the sine of 21.8 degrees to B and B would equal 112 the sine of 21.8 degrees divided by the sine of 93.2 degrees you know what I have a good idea instead of really shrinking all of this 101.67 I erased that this way I'm not condensing anything moving downwards is easier the sign of 93.2 so you should try and use the given if possible so you're not rounding off a rounded number that is the sign of what did we say uh, 21.8 degrees divided by B and B would equal 112 the sign of 21.8 degrees divided by the sign of 93.2 degrees and I'm doing this on my calculator by hand to save time that turns out to be 40.6 and that will work and that's pretty much it another example like that just to make sure that we're getting this Again, the same deal. I glance at this. Say, wait a minute. I could figure out what this is. That's 180 minus 65 degrees minus 53.1 degrees, and C would be. And I'm getting a 61.9 degrees. And now, if I want to find this is B and this is A. If I'm going to buy find B first, I would say the sine of 53.1 degrees to B should equal the sine. And I always need an angle on the opposite side for this to make sense. I don't know whether I mean I'm so small. The sine of 61.9 degrees divided by 22. And B would be 22, the sine of 53.1 degrees divided by the sine of 61.9 degrees. And I can figure out what B is. I'll do that in a minute. And once I'm done with that, I'll say, okay, now let's say the sine, that's the given, sine of 61.9 degrees to 22 equal. To find A, I need the sine opposite of A. And the side opposite of A is 65 degrees. And the same deal happen. A will equal 22, the sine of 65 degrees, divided by the sine of 61.9 degrees. And I'll get those in a minute. And I did the math, and that's what I got. And when you're done, it should make sense. <coughs> the biggest angle should be opposite of the biggest side, and the smallest angle should be opposite of the smallest side <coughs> now I'm going over all the different combinations you could ever come across so the same deal here we know the drill if I want to find angle C I know angle C is 180 minus 37 minus 108 so C would be what is that 145 35 degrees double checking because if you make a mistake you're gonna have to go back and fix it all 35 degrees and now the tradition again these things it gets old really quickly but hopefully that's gonna be the case which means you're really getting this you would say now that you give an information the sine of 108 degrees to 160 equal and depending on which side you want to find this is side a and this is side c if you want to find c first 
Then you're going to say the sine of 35 degrees to C. And C is going to equal 160 sine of 35 degrees divided by the sine of 108 degrees. I'll get that in a minute. Let me lower this down again so we don't make the same mistake we just did. And if I go for the sine of 108 degrees divided by 160, if I want to find A, I'm going to have to use the sine of the angle opposite of A, which is 37 degrees. So A would be 160, the sine of 37 degrees, divided by the sine of 108 degrees. And A would be, and again, I'll find that in a minute. And if I do that on my calculator, that's really what I got. And here we have the same deal, except we're given one angle, not two angles. And here, the only thing I could do, I could start, and you want to be cautious with these problems just a bit. I'm going to show you what that means. Here, I must use the sine of 65 degrees divided by 72 for this to work. I need an angle on the opposite side and the only thing I could find for starters is B. Now we have a small issue. If I cross multiply this says the sine of B equals 55.2 the sine of 65 degrees divided by 72 which is 55.2 the sine of 65 5 divided by 72 I'm getting a 0 0.69 now remember each of these angles could be anywhere between 0 to 180 that's one of them 180 when I get my calculator in and say beta equal and take the inverse sign if I take the inverse sign of my answer I'll get 44 degrees or we know sine is positive in which quadrants in quadrant 1 or 2 so if this is in quadrant 1 but if it was in quadrant 2 which could happen if this is 44 and again I'm browning here couldn't that be also 136 degrees so I know that's confusing but anytime anytime you have the sine of beta equal a number you're gonna come across those two cosine wouldn't work because cosine is positive in quadrant one in quadrant four an angle can be negative or it can be bigger than 180 same thing with tangent only sine has that issue so the price for using the law of sine is what I just mentioned that's why what I'm trying to find angles do you see that this angle here this side here is bigger than this side here which indicate this angle has to be smaller than 65 that eliminates that case that's how you know that this is 44 degrees I'll repeat that when we get to the next problem the same deal so now what now that I know this is 44 and this is 65, I know angle C now is 180 minus 65 minus 44, and that would be 71 degrees. So I got this to be 71 degrees, and now it's safe to use the rest. No harm done. I should use the given information because everything else is rounded. And that's going to be the sign of, if I want to find side C, I must use the 71. So I'm trying to round as least as possible. That would be 72 with a sign of 71 degrees divided by the sign of 65 degrees. And C would be, and I'll get that in a minute, and it's 75.8 so every time i have a sine of beta equal a number between zero and one i'm gonna get those two cases that's why 
if I'm not looking for those two cases, and normally we're not, unless the problem specifically asks you, specifically ask you for that, then you should really be careful with what you use because sometimes you get the wrong angle. Now, instead of giving us the triangle, they're asking us to draw those. That's not a problem. You could draw just a rough graph, and it doesn't have to be the scale. That's not a problem. The only thing on your end that you have to do, I would suggest that you make sure that you label the sides accurately. Meaning, when you label those sides, make sure that you label A, you could put A anywhere you want, that's 55 degrees, make sure that's side A. And if you call this 62 degrees, then this is B, and this is 75, and that's C. And here, automatically, I can figure out a few things. I know what angle C is. No need to do much work. 180 degrees minus 55 degrees minus 62 degrees. And C would be... Sixty-three degrees. Wow, very close. Holmes and Sausage Triangle. And now what? Now I can say that I know this. Well, the given information, I have to use the sine of sixty-three degrees to seventy-five to find whatever I want. And in this case, if I want to find B, I'll say it's the sine of sixty-two degrees divided by B, and B will equal. 75 the sine of 62 degrees divided by the sine of 63 degrees and b would be let me get a bit more space in here so let me really squish those and i'll get that in a minute and similarly if i want to find a well we know what to do i'm going to take the sine again of 63 degrees to 75 and if i want a I have to use the sine of 55 degrees divided by A, and A would equal the cross of those divided by that, and A would be, and I'll get those in a minute. I should expect A to be the smallest, and that's what I get. Now I'm going to stop this video here and continue on in another video.